Hey friends, The Sims 2 Legacy Collection is back and available for purchase on the EA app, Steam, and Epic Games. In honor of this comeback, I wanted to do a modern tutorial for 2025 on how to install the beautiful clean UI for The Sims 2. I personally love the way the default game looks, but I am also a huge fan of the clean UI and I'm sure you all would love to see this tutorial, so let's get started. This is the clean UI created by Great Cheesecake Persona and in the post you will see some examples of what the clean UI will look like. We also have some recommended and compatible CC to use. I'm going to keep it really simple here and not add anything additional and just download the clean UI. So I'm gonna go here and click download, then click on download from Sims file share, then open your downloads folder and you will see the clean UI we just downloaded, double click on it. And we have two folders, one that goes in our downloads and one that goes in our installation folder. Next, go to your documents folder, click on EA games, and then the Sims 2 legacy. The next thing you're going to do is create a new folder and label it downloads. Make sure it is spelled correctly, capital D, it's spelled <laughs> just like this, okay? Now that you have a downloads folder, you can then double click on it. This is also where some of your mods will go as well, so it's always good to have a downloads folder. Now we go to the clean UI folder and click on downloads folder. Double click on the clean UI. And what I'm gonna do, just to make sure everything is organized, I'm gonna come over here to the Sims 2 downloads folder and I'm going to make a new folder specifically for the clean UI, just so that I can have it in its own place. Now that we have our folder open for the clean UI that we just made, let's go ahead and start dragging some of these items over. So first and foremost, go to GCKP clean UI and drag that over first. Next, let's start at the beginning of the folders and click on the UI by plan outfit folder. This is going to basically give us options on how we want the game UI to look. So if we click on the comparison image for the buy plan outfit, you see we have two options. One is the default, which is going to be the default window size for this portion of the UI. And then we have the widescreen no minimum width option, which is going to make it look much wider and there's no specific screen width. Because The Sims 2 has been recently optimized for Windows 10 and 11, I'm going to most likely choose default for a lot of these options. Let's go back out, choose the default option, and place that in this folder as well. We'll go back. Next, let's choose the UI for create a Sim and look at the comparison images. Now you see we have all of these options. If you would like for your window for the everyday outfits and everything in create a Sim to look slightly wider, you could choose this option, but you would at least have to have a screen width of 1920 pixels. I'm just going to choose the default and keep it very simple. And then we're going to go to the UI for the change appearance. Check out the images here, the default versus the widescreen, but your screen has to at least be 1058 pixels. So let's go ahead and use that. Again, most of us have screens that are larger than that now. Next, let's go to the UI collections. Here are the images for this. The default package actually allows for three collections per row. You can basically see more of your collections and it's wider for sure but I don't need that. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the default. Then click on the delete family folder. The no delete family button is referencing an issue where with the ultimate collection with the trash can image right here, when you would click on it and delete a family from the bin, sometimes it could cause corruption with your families. So there's an option to remove that button completely so that you remember not to delete your family from the bin. However, now that it's 2025 and it's been optimized for our newer systems, we may not need this at all. This may not cause corruption, right? So I'm just going to leave the visible delete button there. So let's have the delete button there, choose visible delete family button, leave it the same. Going back, we are now on the family tree and you can see the different resolution sizes for the family tree. I'm going to choose default. And then going back, the mood backgrounds are kind of interesting. When you click on the four stages GIF, you'll see that there are only four mood background colors and it's easier to spot Sims in a bad mood. So it will go from green, yellow, orange to red, or you can just choose the default. The default mood background is more of a gradient. So it just kind of goes from green to red and 
kind of fades into the color if you want that as well. So I'm just gonna choose the default. I don't really have a problem with that. Now I'll click on neighborhood camera cursor and looking at the images, you can see the default is going to only move horizontally. Only choose the neighborhood camera cursor horizontal and vertical package if you have a mod or a neighborhood camera mod that lets you tilt the camera horizontally and vertically. I'm gonna keep it default, but again, if you do have a mod like that, then that's when you would then be able to use this for your clean UI. I'm just going to keep it default. And lastly, let's click on Sims and menus. This is a personal preference. I like having the Sims appear on the menus. If you do not, then you can choose the one where they don't appear in the menu. But I love the Sims and the pet showing up in the menus. I think that's charming. So we will have them appear in the menus. And we're done here. So let's go back to our clean UI and click on the installation folder. And we have two folders that say move to base game and move to cursor folders. In my next window, I'm going to go back to documents, click on the Sims to legacy folder, then click on base. I'm gonna start with the base game first. Click on TS data, then click on res and go all the way down to UI. Now let's go back to the clean UI window. Now click on move to base game UI folder. And then you will see the GCKP clean UI tooltip graphic package. Drag that directly over to the UI folder for the base game. Then you see a folder that says choose one loading background screens. Click on comparison. This will bring you images of the different loading screens you can choose from. On my gaming laptop, I'm currently using the Rural, I cannot say that word, I'm so sorry, <laughs> version because I just really love how it looks. Let's choose the Rural loading screen and drag that over there as well. We're done with the loading screen. Let's go back to the installation folder. There's another folder that says move to cursor folders, double click. Because we are in the base game portion of The Sims 2 on this side, I'm going to click on the base game folder. When you double click on this, I don't know why they're not appearing right here, but these are all the cursors in the base game. So if you go over here and click on the cursors folder, you're just gonna drag all of these over here and replace them. And you're done there. Then we're going to now do this with the other DLCs. So let's just go back, back again. We're going all the way back to the Sims 2 legacy folder where we have all the EPs and SPs. Let's start with the first one. It says apartment life EP8 or mansion and garden SP9. But if you look at the Sims 2 legacy, we do not have SP9, but we do have EP8. Double click on the EP8 folder, TS data res, and go down to UI and then click on cursors. And we're going to do the same thing over here let's click on the apartment life folder we have the sledgehammer underscore eight cursor let's just drag that there and replace all right and go back let's go back back to the sims 2 legacy we do not have sp9 listed in the sims 2 legacy but we do have ep9 so when you double click on ep9 click on ts data res ui cursors leave that open click on mansion and garden sp9 and again this is just because of that confusion with these sims to mansion and garden stuff and the ultimate collection and the way that it is now you will see the same roof underscore cursor underscore eight drag that over and allow it to replace it i don't know why it registers it as ep9 there is no ninth expansion in the sims 2 the ninth ex the last expansion i believe was apartment life so let's just go ahead and go back out of there and last we have open for business ep3 so double click on that and then go to ep3 in the sims 2 legacy folder ts data res ui cursors and then just drag that for style cursor over and we're done we can now just go ahead and see what this will look like and just a heads up, there are installation instructions in the UI folder, but again, they were made for the Ultimate Collection, not for the most recent Sims 2 version, the Sims 2 Legacy version. 
Here we go. <laughs> and everything is working. I'll probably just go into, let's go into Pleasant View because that's the OG. Here we are in Pleasant View and this is the world map. Here we are in the struggling father household. This is the dreamer household. I really love them. Like I, I have so much empathy with Darren. I love him. He's like one of my favorite Sims 2 Sims. But as you can see, everything looks as it should. Let's just go interact with some stuff. We don't have a lot of money in this household. Let's just make sure we pay some bills. He has to go to school soon anyway. I don't even know why he's trying to play the video games. But everything works as it should. Here is the UI going into buy mode. Everything looks really good. And build mode. So that's what that looks like. But yeah, I hope you all found this tutorial very helpful. I'm so excited with the re-release of The Sims and The Sims 2. And it's so cool that we got the entire collection minus The Sims 2 IKEA stuff. I guess there was some legal illities there that I don't know about. But I hope you all download this for yourself. I personally purchased this with my own money because, well, I'm just a huge fan of The Sims 2. It's like my favorite. And I can't even say it's my favorite. It's, it has a really weird sentimental value to me at a time that I really just, I don't know, in my life. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Just keep simming. Always, always, always stay wavy. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.